This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Yes. Uh, so this is the go home show now, and they're trying something different here. Meltzer would say as he's trying to recap it, but the big gist is the stuff with you and Foley. Foley wanted Jeff to put up his voting shares in the company. What was amazing is they showed the crowd and everyone was screaming, no, that they didn't want Jeff to do it. But after some more insults, when he did the same crowd pop for it, well, better than ignoring it. Speaking of ignoring in December. Jeff had given up his backstage power to Foley when he said he was returning to wrestle. So you have your father being brought up in a storyline during this time when you're not really talking to him all that much. Is that risky? So Foley said he went to Nashville to talk things out, but seeing the building cause him to go crazy and remind him how much he hated Jeff and Jeff's father. And Meltzer would say the father thing worked because luckily nobody in the crowd knows Jeff and his father haven't talked in years ever since Jerry completely embarrassed Jeff by going to the WWE headquarters with Kozlov and having put on the WWE website, which caused people in TNA to think that Jerry was negotiating for Jeff to leave. And it cost Jeff a lot of trust in the company short term. So that's the, the reason it happened and the reason maybe you guys weren't speaking anymore. And we'll talk about all that another time, but it is a big move here. We're showing your kids on TV and now we're talking about your dad feels like that would have been a no fly zone. Later, there was a situation with Eric young in storyline that my dad was mentioned that I know he got upset. And I, the way I know that is I heard through Dallas that he basically says, I don't care if it's a work or not. Don't mention my name on your program, period. I respect that. Obviously, a uh, lot of water under the bridge, so to speak. Um, but at this point, storyline and Foley, and I didn't see any problem with it from the real macro level that, look, Mick, I can't say that he loved his time in Tennessee and USWA in Dallas, but he respects it and kind of know, know, knew then. And today it was a part of his journey, uh, to become a household name, but using my father's name in the context, I never saw an issue with it. It's a storyline period. So let's, uh, let's talk about some other storylines that are here on the show. Eric Young's mad at Jarrett for having to wrestle his idol sting. Jarrett's yelling at him like he's sick of guys bugging him, telling Young if it wasn't for him, he'd still be doing indies in Southern Ontario. Quote, if you wonder where that verbiage comes from, it's basically frustration by the writers because the young guys complain about having been there for six years and still never getting a chance. Management's reaction is always, hey, if it wasn't for us, you'd be working for $50 a night. That's what Meltzer says. How close is that to the truth? So it's, it's funny how kind of in this research, this episode is refer, you know, these guys have been with us five years, six years, seven years, and that's all true in some cases, but the growth and the transition and all that it's, it's almost that whether somebody was reporting it to Dave or not, whether he fabricated it or took a little bit of it and blew it up and all that guys going back to the situation that we have covered multiple times a two-hour show with a limited amount of slots and a limited amount of house shows at the end of the day guys want to pay their bills and i never ever faulted anybody for that but the damn juggling act that we played and couldn't write checks just to make everybody happy um that that was a, a it was a constant battle period and so whether it was a, a, a guy like, but Eric, Eric definitely wasn't one of them that would bitch and moan. Did he want more work? Yes. Did he vocalize it? Yes. Did sometimes he would come with, I'm going to hit you with seven ideas and I hope one sticks. Cause that'll get me on impact next week. Absolutely. That's all part of growth. Uh, but, but, but the narrative that the young guys were bitching and that's what the crutch of creative, I think it's how it was said, not crutch, but creative came up with that. That's kind of 
editorializing fiction writing, if you will, that Dave has made millions off of. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.